Lately, I've been seeing articles and ads for oral minoxidil. The titles consist of, quote, old drug grows hair, end quote, or something along the lines of that. Now, I've already made videos on minoxidil, however, I'll do a quick overview of minoxidil right now. Minoxidil is a chemical compound that was discovered to have hair growth effects. When administered topically, it stimulates hair follicles that are either thinning and also hairs that are healthy. It restores a degree of vibrance and in some cases promotes hair regrowth to the scalp. For years, it has been topically applied to the scalp in order to trigger localized hair growth. Minoxidil alone does not grow or stimulate hair, but rather an enzyme that your body produces known as the sulfur transferase enzyme helps turn minoxidil into its active ingredient that stimulates hair follicles. This ingredient is minoxidil sulfate. Minoxidil was discovered to have hair growth properties when it was first used for its original purpose. Under the brand name of Lonitin, oral minoxidil between 10 to 40 milligrams a day was used to treat drug-resistant hypertension. Basically, those who had high blood pressure took minoxidil orally as a pill when other high blood pressure drugs did not work. Patients who took oral minoxidil were noted to have hypertrichosis, which means the increase of body hair. Keep in mind, this is body hair in places that are sometimes not wanted. It was here where researchers and dermatologists alike pushed for a topical formulation which when applied to a local part of the body, say the scalp, a sort of hypertrichosis or hair stimulation effect may be triggered. The late Dr. Gunter Kahn, a dermatologist that operated in North Miami Beach in the United States of America, patented a topical version of minoxidil in the 80s, along with the Upjohn Company, and this product is known as Rogaine. And since then, it has been used to help treat various causes of baldness, with it being a main treatment for androgenetic alopecia. Now that that brief overview is out of the way, you may be wondering why I think oral minoxidil is simply not worth it. Well, let's consider some things. Why might some people want to use oral minoxidil? Well, the application of topical minoxidil is a hassle and comes with side effects on its own right that are more annoying than dangerous. The alcohol content of liquid minoxidil has been known to cause scalp irritation and drying. This also contributes to scalp inflammation and also sometimes scaling, which is a very uncomfortable peeling of your, of your skin. And having that on your scalp isn't the best of things, right? Dandruff has also been known to be a cosmetic issue of liquid topical minoxidil, along with making hair oily. Foam minoxidil, however, does not seem to cause much of these issues. So, taking a pill with finasteride is a quick and easy solution. You don't have to wait for your scalp to dry like with liquid topical minoxidil. You can just pop this oral minoxidil tablet. So, this is a benefit, but is it really worth it? Mm, well, let's see. Oral minoxidil has a host of nasty side effects. Now, some people might say that these nasty side effects are only apparent when high doses of oral minoxidil are taken, say the 10 to 40 milligram lonitin daily prescribed range. Well, a study titled Safety of Low Doses Oral Minoxidil for Hair Loss, a multi-center study of 1,404 patients, published in 2021 in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology, found that when administered 2.5 mg of oral minoxidil daily, 15.1% of patients that took oral minoxidil experienced hypertrichosis. Systemic side effects included fluid retention, lightheadedness, tachycardia, which is a high resting heart rate, so say you have a heart rate of 100 beats per minute while you're sitting down, that is unusual, pericarditis, which is fluid that compresses the heart, and even hypotension, also known as low blood pressure for those of you who don't know, headache, periorbital edema, and insomnia. And this led to the secession of treatment in 29 of the individuals, so 1.2% of the 1,404 patient population. No life-threatening symptoms were noted. With topical minoxidil, similar symptoms are possible, but very rare. But also, 15% of people getting hypertrichosis because of oral minoxidil? That is pretty significant, and I wouldn't say that's rare. 
in addition to the fluid retention in limbs, personally, I don't think it's worth it. And again, low dose oral minoxidil between 2 to 5 mg has not fully been proven to be safe from severe adverse side effects when taken long term. Those with pre existing heart conditions and other medical issues are at risk when using oral minoxidil at any dosage and usually need to be watched over by a medical professional. So you can't self medicate with this, guys. It's not like minoxidil, topical minoxidil rather, where you can just get it over the counter. This is an actual drug that you need a prescription for. So be wise and don't find it on some random shady website online. Oral minoxidil for hair loss is still fairly new and not much long-term data exists for lower dosages. So we cannot say for sure that the severe side effects are dose dependent. So for me, I'm not taking that shit. <laughs> I'm not taking that shit, okay? I'm not taking oral minoxidil and maybe you'll want to do a bit more research if you're going to experiment and uh, use that in your hair loss deck. So anyway, um, that's it for this video and thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.